Hi, I'm Chris Kowash of the NFPA, and here are the five most frequently asked questions about ground fault circuit interrupter devices. Question number one. Doesn't arc fault circuit interrupter protection already cover GFCI protection? A lot of this comes about because AFCI, well, just to give people a, a breakdown in case they don't know, we've been talking about AFCIs and GFCIs. GFCIs are ground fault circuit interrupters. Um, they look for a differential in a circuit and trip if somebody is shunting off some of that current, usually around four to six milliamps. So it's, it's an electrical shock protection. AFCI is a fire protection. It looks for arcs and sparks in the wiring. But where people assume that AFCIs are um, covering GFCI requirements are the original AFCI devices only covered one type of arc, whether it be a serial arc or a parallel arc. They're now called combination arc fault circuit interrupters, which cover both sets of arcs and sparks. So it's a combination of arc and sparking, not a combination of arc fault protection and ground fault protection. So that's usually where it comes out is this combination AFCI is only an AFCI device. Question number two, does GFCI protection work on AFCI protected circuits? Yes, an AFCI device does work on a GFCI protected circuit. Um, typically, and vice versa. And vice versa. Okay. There are two different things, like I said, one's looking for a, a ground fault where yep. current is not coming back on the circuit, and the other one's looking for an arc in the circuit. So they are compatible, and a lot of the manufacturers make both actually have them tested to confirm that. And recently, there's been products, um, I don't know if they're out on the market yet or not, but there are devices that are, are being made or possibly even uh, marketed now that will do both AFCI and GFCI in a single circuit breaker. Question number three, can I replace a two-prong receptacle with a GFCI device? That actually comes down to how a GFCI device um, functions. A lot of people assume that it needs an equipment grounding conductor with a green wire because just because it uses the term ground fault. It does not. It's essentially looking for the current in, in say, in your home, typically you have the black wire and the white wire, which is the grounded or ungrounded um, circuit. It's looking to make sure that the current's the same in both of those leads. So it has nothing to do with the equipment grounding conductor. And one of the benefits of using a GFCI device in place of a two-pronged receptacle is it gives you some protection. If you did have a two-pronged uh, device connected to two prongs and there was a fault in the unit and you touched the enclosure, the ground fault circuit interrupter would give you protection that you have absolutely none of in the two-wire device. Okay. So it's, it's recommended by the code or required by the code to actually replace the two prongs with GFCIs, even if they're ungrounded circuits. Question number four. What's the difference between GFCI protection and GFPE or ground fault protection of equipment? GFCI is ground fault circuit interrupter, what we've been talking about. Typically those are used on 125 volt, 15 to 20 amp branch circuits. Um, it provides protection for personnel so you don't get electrocuted, which is a death, or um, a serious shock injury. GFPE is ground fault protection of equipment. This is something to protect equipment, not people. So its current levels are substantially higher than the four to six milliamps that are allowed for personnel protection. There are two totally different standards that the products are evaluated to. Um, again, just because of the life aspect versus the equipment aspect. For example, if you had a uh, blast furnace or something like that, you might have ground fault, high resistance ground fault, or you may be able to tolerate a higher ground fault because you don't want that system to shut down. You could be 100, 200 milliamps. You could even be in the amp range for your ground fault. So it's really to protect the equipment, not the, the people in those stages. Question number five, why do GFCI devices have to be readily accessible? Well, usually what the issue comes about with this readily accessible is a code does require it to be readily accessible and often I get questions of, well, I have a vending machine that's in front of the receptacle so it's not readily accessible. The code requires that receptacle to be GFCI protected. It does not require the receptacle itself to be the GFCI protection. So you could use a GFCI receptacle upstream to protect that vending machine or even a GFCI circuit breaker, which would, either one would be readily accessible so it's not behind the machine. So there you have it. Those are the five most frequently asked questions about ground fault circuit interrupter devices. I'm Chris Kowash from the NFPA. Thank you for watching.